So I'm going to make this the abridged version of this story. And then where you want me to expand, you can guide me. How's that? Alrighty. That sounds like so, a good So for everyone watching and listening, um, I spent 26 years in the corporate world. I was an advertising and marketing executive who had the honor and the privilege to work with some of the most iconic brands on the planet from McDonald's to Visa to AOL to most recently Harley Davidson. So imagine I'm the chief, of, chief marketing officer of Harley Davidson mm -hmm. and I start realizing that I've made it all the way to really the, this, you know, peak of my career. I have this sexy global job, you know, one of the most iconic brands on the planet. People tattoo it on their bodies. Yes. And I'm waking up every morning going, is this all there is? So I had ticked all these boxes of success on the outside, but I was genuinely feeling empty on the inside. And I was feeling out of alignment with my truth. And I had a wake up call. Actually, I had had many over decades that I wasn't paying attention to. And I had a wake up call through a nightmare while I was at Harley that really woke me up to this idea that I was neglecting my soul, that I wasn't listening to it. I wasn't loving it. I wasn't nourishing it. And that made me realize like, oh, that's why I'm feeling this. I'm actually not living my truth. But the problem, the challenge for me was like, I didn't know what my truth was at that time. I needed to slow down and figure it out. And that's what sent me on this journey that I called soulbatical. I actually, after I kind of understood the meaning of this nightmare that I was having, I christened myself chief soul officer of my life because I knew giving myself a big title would give me the responsibility for like, okay, I need to listen to this. I need to do yeah. something about this. And then I created this term called soulbatical so I could give some people something to hang on to because honestly, no one understood why I was leaving this the coolest job in the world, right? <clears throat> I love that you brought up the drugs because I'll tell you, Chris, my drug was numbing in every way possible. My drug was staying so busy that I was outrunning my emotions. I didn't have to listen to the little voice inside and busyness is an addiction, folks. Yes. I lived it 100%. The other thing, I was drinking a bottle or more of wine a night wow. to numb those voices, to go to sleep and try to find peace instead of sitting and listening. And so the first thing to answer your question, the first thing, at least it was this way in my journey, and it's a recommendation I make to a lot of my clients. It's like, catch yourself when you're about to reach for that glass of wine. Catch yourself when you're caught in that, on that hamster wheel of busyness and find some stillness. Because the stillness is, it's like, you know, a snow globe. You know when you shake a snow globe and it's like, you can't see anything, you can't see the scene inside? Yeah. That's how we live our lives for the most part. So when we sit in stillness, even if it's 15 minutes a day, we start to practice that and we're letting the snow settle. Then we can see, then we can hear and reconnect. I call it finding your soul signal. That's when I think you really know when you listen deeply. And so many of us are trying to outrun that little voice because it's telling us some pretty inconvenient truths. Oh, once again, you're speaking my language, my friend. So yes, and I, I will never forget, it was very early on in my coaching career, and exactly as you just described, I kept describing myself as a new coach. Mm. And my coach, Rich Litvin, looked at me and he said, I need to teach you a concept. The concept is called transcend and include. And it is exactly what you just described, Chris. It was this idea that I was literally cutting myself off from my past. Like I had to leave behind this incredible experience that has created the person who I am today. And when he said that, it was like, oh, my shoulders dropped. I felt this great sense of relief and I felt whole. Yeah. And I was like, that's right. And I also felt like, I felt a, a sense of confidence that I hadn't felt before because I was like, you know what? He's right. I've been a leader of teams of 200 people. 
all around the world. I have been coaching for decades. I was just calling it something different. I was calling it leadership and leadership and coaching. And so I'm so glad you went back and put a fine point on this one because that really helped me to get clear on the value and like, you know, it kind of goes back to the point I was making about the belief from the inside out and getting reconnected. And I was like, oh yeah, this is actually one of my strengths and superpowers because as a leader, one of my gifts was shining a spotlight on other people's talents, helping them develop that talent and then giving them the runway to fly. And I'm like, oh, that's what I do for a living now. And without that reframe, I wouldn't have seen that. So I love that you're bringing that up for people.